Hey guys, we're here today in Valheim and we're going to talk a little bit about chimneys and try to gain a basic understanding of how smoke dissipates in the game so you can get as creative as you would like when building a chimney in your house. The first things we need to discuss about fireplaces is that they will snuff themselves out if they are covered in too much smoke. You can see here in this tight little outhouse that is only two floor squares long, the fire is putting itself out because even though the roof is vented, it is dying out from too much smoke. If I remove the top roof from above it, the fire will immediately light because it has sufficient venting. And if I place a 45 degree thatch roof as opposed to a 26 degree thatch roof, the fire stays lit and will vent sufficiently because it has a little bit more airflow. Now you can see here in this little tester house we have a fairly standard looking chimney. The smoke will successfully vent out obviously here and if we add up to two one by one pieces to it, it will still vent out the chimney without any issues of smothering out the fire. However, it will let a little bit more smoke in the house and could possibly give you some smoke inhalation if you were standing too close to the fire or if you started jumping up and getting up in the higher parts of the room. If I added one more one by one section of flooring and dropped it to just a one by one meter of opening for the chimney to vent through, you will see a large amount of smoke start filling up the room and would probably not be enough for it to vent efficiently. Now, if I left those three one by one floorboards up in the chimney, and then I were to bring down the front just a bit more, you will see that the chimney snuffs itself out from too much smoke. And when I remove that front piece, it lights up again. So the smoke escaping through those wood floors does factor in how close or far they are from the chimney and how much room it has to escape from the front end. So if you're using this as your main house campfire and you're cooking on it and having the front more open, it will have an easier time escaping. If I remove back down to just the two floorboards, and then cover up the front again. The campfire does not seem to snuff itself out, even with it being closed almost down to the floor with at least a one by two meter opening, which is two side by side, one by one floors. It still has enough room for the smoke to escape. So the more closed off you have the sides and the front of your fireplace itself, the more open your chimney has to be. However, it does seem like a one by two meter opening seems to be enough of an opening for smoke to escape for anyone's standard chimney. Now the brazier is much more unique in the smoke aspect just like it is everywhere else in the game where even with three one by one meter floor pieces and the one meter wood beam that it's needed to hang on, it still vents out pretty good out of just that single hole. You can see here I'm breathing in a little bit of smoke as I stand right up against it, but as I back up, there's no smoke on me and you can barely see a smoke build up in the house at all. So if you're trying for a minimalistic design and trying to go with the smallest chimney possible, the brazier might be your option. Now you can see here that the hearth works different than the campfire and the brazier, as we have a completely open chimney right here and I've just funneled it into a standard size chimney. And all I have to do is close up the front of it and the hearth will be put out by the smoke without any blockers in the chimney. It will go in and out from there, showing that it requires more venting space than the campfire or the brazier. And if I just place a half wall on the front, it will operate just fine. But clearly it cannot get nearly as low as the campfire did before it starts getting put out. And if I try to vent it through a one meter by two meter wide opening, just like our campfire, even having this much space up to it, it will still burn sporadically. So we can see very clearly that the size of the fire does have a direct factor on how much smoke it produces and means that each different fire source definitely provides different pros and cons when it comes to designing your house and chimney. Now, if you were crazy enough to try and stick a bonfire in your house and use it as a campfire, none of this really applies because it does not go out to the rain, which means you don't actually need a chimney. You just need to have a huge hole on your roof to let the smoke escape, and even in a tight quarter like this, it will not smoke you out. Knowing that for the standard campfire, we need a one by two meter opening for smoke to vent out means we can create some interesting designs. I created a double-sided fireplace a while back and I vented two campfires to the same chimney and gave them that one by two meter opening. Now that double-sided fireplace had some issues of its own with them getting put out, but as we compile more and more info, I'm sure you can get something like that to work even better than it does in that video. Using this information we have with the two by one meter opening, you can even create turns in chimneys and create more of like a wood burning stove effect and have it vent out a side. And you can see here that I have blocked out the side exit 
and made it a one by two meter opening. Now anytime we make a turn in a chimney, it gives the smoke some issues, but it runs decently with that one by two meter opening on its exit point. However, if we were to put that one by two meter opening closer by placing one right where the chimney turns, you will see that the campfire goes out pretty quickly. Once a little bit of the smoke has dissipated, it will relight, but it will continually go in and out. This is showing us that it's not just a straight one by two meter opening that the chimney requires, just that you can bottleneck the smoke at certain points. If you choke it too early or choke it too constantly, it will put the fire out. This means with a little bit of experimentation and creativity, you can create turns or adjustments in your chimney and shrink the opening down in size as long as you bring it back up to the right size and don't maintain that choke point for too long. Now an important thing to note with the fire and smoke system is you don't actually need a chimney if your house is designed correctly. We have a small four square box right here and it is three tiles high with a 26 degree roof. We can run this fire in here and the smoke will go up and collect at the top, but at no point will it suffocate out the fire and we will not get smoke inhalation, even though the smoke will fill the room quite a bit. Going any lower than this, even down one meter, so it's two full walls and a half wall, the smoke will start getting your character. And then if you look at just the base one single wall height, you can place your character at the edge of the fire buff range and the smoke will begin to fill this area as well. However, it will still not hit your character. This means that given enough space horizontally around a campfire or vertically around a campfire will allow smoke to dissipate without it giving you smoke inhalation or putting the fire out. You don't actually have to have a chimney provided you design your house with a large enough interior for smoke to gather up near the roof and dissipate or spread out wide away from the campfire and dissipate before it gets to your character. Now what's interesting is in the same four square wide shack, the hearth can still operate in here as well without giving you smoke inhalation and gathering all the smoke at the top of the building in the same size building as a campfire. So the hearth is not necessarily producing more smoke than the campfire, it just needs to be funneled correctly and it just can't be funneled quite as tightly as a campfire when you go into a chimney. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the smoke escapes and how the campfire, brazier, and hearth are different in how much room they need to ventilate smoke, we can take a look at a couple basic chimney designs. We'll go through three base designs and three top designs. Base design one is octagonal. You can place down a one meter log beam and then rotate it two clicks each time until you have a completed octagon. In order to finish this up to the top, you will select four of the corners, which is every two spaces, and place vertical log beams on those spots. Continue the octagonal design with the one meter beams above that. And then you can continue up your vertical beams as high as you would like to the top of the building. And all you do to wall in the higher parts of the chimney is run walls between your four beams and it will turn it into a square from an octagon at whatever height you would like. It is easy to give this chimney an octagonal look still by placing beams along the walls on the other seams of the one meter beams and giving it that slight octagonal look. You also have the basic chimney design which can be done with just squares and then closing in the front of that chimney area at whatever height you would like. You can have it be a small opening by closing it up just like we did in our testing and just being aware of how much room it needs inside the chimney in order to ventilate properly and move that up as high as you would like. And the third basic fireplace design that I'll show you here is a below ground one. Just dig out the ground just a bit, line around the chimney down there with half walls to where you can be standing over your fireplace if your house is elevated off the ground a bit and you don't wanna raise it up. And then just like the standard chimney, you can continue this whole design up until you reach the roof. However, I will also show you a couple chimney tops, one of which works pretty good with this underground design. The first one will be just the pop out on the side. So we can put a roof piece there and then cover in the sides with angled wall pieces and have it just vent out the side of your building as opposed to running a chimney all the way up to the top of your roof, leaving you just a small opening to still be able to access the fire. This does work with the beneath ground fire and a ground level fire. And this pop out can be done pretty much at any height. So this is the shortest version of it. However, all you do is extend the side walls up and then do the top pop out roof whenever you would like the smoke to be escaping. The other chimney topper is the classic one. Add one meter beams to the four corners. Use two meter beams on the sides and then place a ridge cap connecting those beams. You can also decorate it by having roof cross pieces 
placed along the front and the back and go with the classic look. It's important to give yourself at least the one meter opening on the sides in order for the smoke to vent out as we've already done some testing there. And if you choke it down too much, it might give the fire some problems. And the last chimney top I'm gonna show you here is the octagonal one. We can place the beams just like we did on the classic chimney and then use the one meter wood beams to create ourselves an octagon just like we did on the bottom of the octagonal fireplace. Once that's up there, you can use the angled wood beams to go on every seam and cross the beams over each other two clicks each time, just like creating an octagon and give yourself this unique looking bloom pattern, still leaving yourself a one meter gap for the smoke to escape. Any of these toppers can be mixed with any of the base of the fireplace. And these are just three very basic options to give yourself different looks when you're building a chimney. Hopefully this guide was helpful to you on getting a basic understanding of how chimneys work and how the smoke dissipation works in the game, letting us see how the campfire, brazier, and a hearth all operate differently when it comes to their smoke dissipation and require different amounts of room. We also got to see how the smoke dissipates when you don't have a chimney and that it is possible to design an entire house without ever doing a chimney if you don't mind the smoke building up along the top ends of the roof. You're also able to design things that look like a wood-burning stove where you're able to close it and heat your house without actually seeing the fire if that's something that you're interested in. And there are many different ways to build a fireplace in your house that is still accessible to be able to cook on or heat your bed. And there are many different chimney tops to be able to mix around and use in order to create the look and design that you would like. I appreciate you guys joining me for this installment of Building for Squares. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.